Well, good morning. Um, the bell ringer today um, for SAS 8, choosing classes, part of the probability unit, is of 50 people surveyed at Harry Potter Broom Flying School, the following information was collected. Um, they collected information on whether they were male or female, whether they had brooms or no brooms, and whether they had an accident or had not had an accident. So we need to give convincingly or convincing statistically sound evidence that males are less risky than girls at the HP Broom Flying School. Now, um, we just had a test yesterday, and a question very similar to this was on that test. Um, however, the question just asked for convincing evidence, in which case that evidence may be a little different than the answer to this question. This says statistically sound evidence. So let's look at it. We had 50 people. Um, of the 50 people, 21, 3, and 6, that is 30 people were male and 20 people were female. Because inside this circle are male. Um, they are mutually exclusive, which means that anything outside a male would be female. That's why they're not labeled. Um, anybody inside this circle has brooms. So obviously there is nobody inside this circle that does not have brooms. Um, because you can't have an accident without one in this particular Venn diagram. These six are very specific. They are female without brooms. Makes sense, right? They're not inside either one of these circles. The people that intersect here are male with brooms. Um, there's 24 of them. Out of the 24, three have had accidents. Um, in this right here, these are 14 women that had brooms and only two had accidents. So let's look and see if that helps a lot. Now, while there have been more accidents by males and females, consider this. Males are 3 24ths likely to crash and females are 2 14ths likely to crash based on the fact that you have to have a broom to crash in the Harry Potter broom flying school. So, the probability of female getting an accident is one seventh, while the probability of a male getting an accident is one eighth. Large number in the denominator means a larger probability. So women are more likely to be in an accident, and that is the answer. All right, let's talk about good things. A uh, good thing we have in our life right now is uh, we won our match Tuesday night or Wednesday night against uh, Bryan High School. Um, tennis team won 16 matches to 11. Um, that's good because last year we lost to him by one match. So anyway, share your good things with me. I'd love to put them in here and let everybody know how things are going in your life. All right, so choosing classes. Four teachers offer Zane's favorite computer class at different times during the day. School counselor asks Zane if he prefers a morning or afternoon class. Below is a list of teachers and their periods they teach this class. The morning classes are first, second, and third periods, and the afternoon classes are fourth, fifth, and sixth periods. So Mr. Nelson has a second, a fourth, a fifth, and a sixth period available. Ms. Trevino has a first, second, third, fourth, and fifth period available. Mr. Garza has first, third, fourth, and fifth. And Ms. Jones has first, second, third, and sixth periods available. All right, before answering the counselor's question, Zane wants to list all the possibilities so he can make a choice that gives him the highest probability of getting a teacher he prefers. Create a table and a tree diagram that illustrates the probabilities or possibilities. So this is a good chart. You can see columns are the periods and the rows are the teachers. So there are three teachers that have a first period class. There are three teachers that have a second period class, three that have a third, three that have a fourth, two that have a fifth, and three that have a sixth period class. Um, so let's look. Um, a tree diagram, morning, shows all the teachers. Notice that Trevino, who has three morning classes, had three branches off this tree. Garza has two because he has two morning classes. And Miss Jones has three because she has three morning, three morning classes. Nelson only has one. Same thing with afternoon. So this tree diagram describes the chart of possible classes for morning and afternoon. And the probability chart illustrates the probabilities of getting each teacher. So the probability of getting Nelson in the morning is one out of 17. Because if you count the number of branches on the end of all of the tree diagram, there's 17. So Trevino in the morning is three out of 17, three out of 17. Garza, two out of 17. And Jones, three out of 17. Now, if we were just doing probability of morning, it'd be a different number in the denominator. You guys can figure out which one that is. Nelson in the afternoons, three out of 17. 
Trevino in the afternoon is two out of 17. There's two over here in the afternoon. Garza has two and uh, Jones has one. So he remembers he wants to take his math class during the third period. What is the probability that he will be assigned the computer class during this time? Randomly. I didn't write that in here, but um, let's go ahead and put that in there. Um, what is the probability that he will be randomly assigned the computer class during this time? Okay, now you see the answer. It's third period or three out of 17, 17%. Because if you go back, morning, third period, right here, there's three possible classes on third period. Trevino has one, Garza has one, and Jones has one. So three out of 17. All right, Zane prefers to be in a class of Ms. Trevino and Mr. Nelson. Should he pick morning or afternoon? So what that means is, is he going to have a better probability of getting Mr. Nelson or Ms. Trevino in the morning, or is he going to have a better probability of getting Mr. Nelson or Ms. Trevino in the afternoon? Um, so he'll choose morning or afternoon if that is the choices he has to get a better random choice of one of those two teachers. So let's see. Go back to this chart. So what were the two choices again? Nelson or Trevino? Nelson has three afternoon classes. And Trevino has two afternoon classes. That's five. And Nelson has one morning class, and Trevino has three morning classes. So four. There are more opportunities to get an afternoon class than there is to get a morning class for Trevino or Nelson. So that makes more sense. Nelson in the morning, one out of 17. Trevino in the morning, three out of 17. That's four out of 17. Zane should pick afternoon since he has a slightly higher probability of getting one of those two teachers. All right, after checking the schedule, the counselor told Zane that Mr. Garza's classes are filled, so he can't pick Garza. How does this information affect the probability of Zane getting in an afternoon class? All right, and if Zane asks for an afternoon class, how does this affect his probability of getting Mr. Nelson or Ms. Trevino? So overall, the probability of getting an afternoon class changes since Mr. Garza's classes are no longer an option. Now, the probability of an afternoon class is... Six out of 13, because Garza has four classes. If I'm not mistaken, um, he has one in the morning and three in the afternoon. So the probability of getting Mr. Nelson and Mr. Vino greatly improves because now there are fewer classes in the afternoon. The probability of getting Mr. Nelson and Mr. Vino is five out of six or 83.3%. So because this is a required class for all students and Mr. Garza's classes are filled, the school adds another teacher, Ms. Lopez. She's going to teach first and sixth periods. Does this fact affect the probability of getting Mr. Nelson in the morning? And if you look here, this is a new chart with Lopez on there. There's one Lopez in the morning right here and one Lopez here in the afternoon. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight classes in the morning and seven in the afternoon. Let's affect the probability of getting Mr. Nelson in the morning. Nelson only has one in the morning. Oops. The probability of getting Mr. Nelson class changes. They now has a one-eighth or 12.5% probability of getting Mr. Nelson if he asks for a morning class. All right. Well, Zane is calculating probabilities so he can make his decision. The class offerings change again. Mr. Garza's class is filled and Ms. Lopez is added. If Zane requests an afternoon class, what is the probability of getting Ms. Trevino for fourth period? So Ms. Trevino only has one class fourth period. So we're just talking about afternoon. So they're only going to pick from afternoon classes. There's seven. Um, Ms. Lopez, oh, no, we're looking for Ms. Trevino. She has one class in the afternoon, so it's one out of seven or 14.3%. So we're going to launch choosing classes in college. This is exactly what it looks like as a Venn diagram, okay? So this particular um, Venn diagram is the interesting subject. This one is spaces available, and this one works with your schedule. The intersection of works with your schedule and interesting subject is always already full. Interesting subject and spaces available always creates a conflict. Spaces available and works with your schedule means that the class is boring. Notice that boring does not coincide with interesting subject. And an intersection of all three is obviously doesn't exist. Now, none of you have taken a college course and have had to deal with this, but when you go to college or even trade school, you're going to find that this Venn diagram is very, very, very true. All right, so 
There is an assignment in the Google Classroom. Please go take care of it. SAS 8, choosing classes. Um, get that done as soon as possible. It will be marked missing um, tonight at midnight. Um, Y'all have a great day. Be blessed and be a blessing. Yeah.